Good meowning, everybody, and welcome to VG Myths, the online internet cat pun TV show that needs to be stopped. In Super Mario 3D World, you play as a clouder of cats on a quest to do whatever you want, because that's how cats work. As we all know, cats are one step above the laws of physics on the universe's hierarchy of needs, which is why I'm grounding these cats and nerfing their world-altering acrobatic abilities. Can you beat Super Mario 3D World without jumping? Unlike a certain other game that chose to ally with the cat's archenemy, 3D World has no in-game jump counter. We'll have to dust off the old semantic book and define what a jump is ourselves. For the purposes of this run, almost every action triggered by a press of the jump button is considered a jump. Wall jumps are jumps. Pull jumps, both horizontal and vertical, are jumps. Swimming? Probably a stretch, but yeah, just to be safe, swimming is legally a jump. And because I'd never hear the end of it if I didn't clarify, yes, a jump is a jump. We are, however, allowed to use the jump button for cannon launches and actions performed by holding the jump button, such as mid-air abilities and bouncing on enemies for extra height. Absolutely all actions not triggered with the jump button are 100% allowed, though I personally avoided the invincibility leaf since, I mean, come on. Note for the Ultra Purists, we'll also be using the jump button for menu navigation and entering levels, which has a jumping animation. This challenge run is unfortunately only about game mechanics and not a war against the fundamental idea of elevating oneself via leg movement. With the rule set finally decided, let's get into the game. Surprisingly for once, the game doesn't start with a dozen cliffs surrounded by jump tutorials. Instead, it's a dozen cliffs surrounded by cat tutorials, which actually represents how we're gonna be playing the game. Cats have the ability to climb on any flat surface, which we're gonna need to abuse throughout the entire adventure. With this wall climbing ability, we can make our way to the second part of the level at which we're a little stuck. We can only attach to a wall if there's a cat ramp next to it or while we're airborne, and we're totally fenced in here against a totally flat wall. Wall. But there is one more critical mechanic to this run. Multiplayer. In 3D World, players are capable of picking up and throwing each other, but there's nothing stopping a single player from using two controllers simultaneously to give themselves a boost. Abusing throws lets us easily complete level 1-1, the first of many. Now that a second cat is out of the bag, we can also abuse multiplayer bubbles. If a player joins mid-stage, goes off-screen, dies, or presses the bubble button, they'll enter a bubble and automatically fire follow another player. Normally you'd exit these bubbles by pressing the jump button, but for the purposes of this run, using the jump button to exit bubbles counts as a jump. There are two alternatives. Either hit the bubble from below, which isn't a viable option for obvious reasons, or wait approximately 55 time units. Levels have a time limit though, so it's almost always a better idea to make fancy cat moves instead. Since we can only attach to a wall while airborne, we'll have to look for points where we can walk off a ledge and immediately grab an adjacent wall. Level 1 1-3 looked like a pretty big obstacle when the run began, but trust me, this is one of the easiest levels in the game. Right after 1-3 comes 1-4, Plessy's Plunging Falls, which let me just come right out and tell you is impossible. Plessy is not a cat, so a required jump near the end of the level looks totally undoable. Luckily, nobody cares. This is coincidentally one of the first levels in the game to be placed on a split path. While 1-4 is impossible, 1-5 is totally doable, letting us leave Plessy to wallow in despair as we move on to the first castle. Once there, we reveal a potentially scary mechanic. Green stars aren't just a bonus for completionists, they're a required collectible to finish the game. Thanks to Captain Toad, we've got more than enough green stars already, but we'll have to make an active effort to collect them from this point forward. For the same reason, there's no benefit to skipping worlds via secret exits, which I deliberately avoided mentioning earlier to trick you into thinking I'm an idiot for walking right past the world one skip. By now, you'll also also probably want to restock on cats in level 1-1. It's one of the easiest levels in the game and is absolutely littered with cats, so we'll be restocking here pretty much any time we take damage. Most of World 2 isn't much more hassle than World 1, save for a decently close shave with a timer on World 2-5. Then there's World 2-Tank. And 2-Tank is an auto-scroller. The ledge in the foreground is blocked by an invisible wall, making us sitting ducks at ground level. After throwing ourselves up to the first tank, there's the question of getting to the next tank with a literal army of tanks following behind. To make matters worse, you can't climb on the decorative objects on the back wall, automatically detaching from the wall if you move into them. It's time for us to pull out our secret weapon, macaroni and cheese. 
seconds. Peach's mid-air ability allows her to temporarily hover, giving us a bit of extra airtime. This gets us past the first set of tanks, and Luigi will pop out of his bubble in time to get us onto the second set. For the final tank, I abused my triple-double secret technique, three-player mode. If we put Toad in a bubble with proper timing halfway through the level, he'll pop out just in time to give us the final boost we need. It took a few hours to get one clean run of this level, but with it done, we can move on to World 3. Welcome to another of the hardest levels in the game, 3-7 Switchboard Falls. The platform we need to get to near the beginning is all the way on the other side of a pool of water, and the giant enemy guarding it is immune to cats. At first I thought getting to the platform would be a ludicrous impossible goal, then I remembered this game is on the Wii U. Of course they let you move the stage gimmick with the touchscreen, as well as literally hold the enemy in place. From here we intentionally take damage, letting us fit beneath and throw our partner into the big switch to move on with our lives. But near the end of the level is this terrifying deja vu. No worries though, the switch box this time is low enough to hit with a grounded cat, letting us safely murder everyone. Next up, to make things as confusing as possible, is level 5-1, because I accidentally took the secret exit like an idiot. Seems like it should be easy, being a big open level more focused on exploration than platforming, but it's hiding a pretty decent little puzzle. You normally pull jump up to a literal key item on top of a palm tree in a relatively open area, so we'll need some fancy thinking to get up without that pull jump. If you line up everybody just right, you can throw yourself onto yourself and throw a boomerang at the height of your bounce to grab the key. The second half of the level is a plessy segment that gave me a brief moment of horror thinking the run was immediately over, but turns out this specific plessy segment doesn't have any jumps. I swear, it's almost like the devs know what we're trying to do, it's getting kinda creepy. Ahead is a split path, on which one level looks decently impossible, with the other requiring us to backtrack for more green stars. I was able to get a good chunk by doing World 4, but there's a huge cache of 10 green stars in level 4 dash box that I was really desperate for. But they seemed out of reach. The first of the bunch requires the use of bounce pads, which you'd ordinarily trigger with the jump button. After scrounging the universe for green stars and crawling my way back, I made a startling revelation. It's the Wii U. Oh yeah! The bounce pads can be triggered with the jump button, but that's obviously a boring little accidental side option. The much more intuitive and totally practical method is to hit the touchscreen with your nose. Thanks to Nintendo's unique approach to game design, we get just enough green stars to enter level 5-3, which is a super short miniature cakewalk. There's an interesting little quirk with the World 5 boss that came up during the run. If you throw a character onto its weak spot, it doesn't take damage. The the character just sort of clips through and stands on the weak spot instead. Apparently the devs never considered the possibility that players would be silly. Luckily, ground pounds still do damage, letting us kill the boss and move on to World 6. Most of World 6 is a cakewalk. Keyword most. World 6-7 Fuzzy Timeline. Three words. Indoor. Auto-scrolling tower. Absolutely every possible way you could make a level impossibly hard is all combined to one ultimate smorgasbord of impossibility. So, how in the heck are we gonna have any hope of finishing this level? I'm glad you asked. Enter in four-player mode. At the exact moment the level begins, make Toad enter his bubble. Hold up on Peach's controller with your pinky while using another controller to make Mario throw Luigi to safety. Kill the Goomba, then throw Peach onto the wall. Shift your hand so that you control Peach's movement with one hand, and your other hand is free to press Mario and Luigi's bubble buttons at exactly 381 on the timer. Abuse a little indent in the wall to get up to the first crusher area with Peach. The bounce pad is dumb and stupid and broken and won't activate by a touchscreen, so instead we need to abuse a quirk in the game's physics. Run onto the crusher just before it's fully retracted. This causes Peach to go airborne rather than walking down the little slope, giving just barely enough height to latch onto the wall. At the seesaw, play a super stressful waiting game until 345, at which point Toad finally escapes and has just enough time to use his high strength set to get Peach high enough to grab the wall past the first cloud, allowing her to climb past the second. You'll have exactly one moment to relax before intentionally dooming yourself within the above death trap. Surprise plot twist, right at the nick of time, Mario and Luigi escape their bubbles with Luigi sacrificing his life to save Mario and Peach. Have Mario throw Peach onto the boxes and break one of them to give Peach a bit more space to work with. Climb to the blocks to recharge, then climb up to the seesaw. Get off the seesaw at the top of its arc and get the absolute most possible distance 
distance out of the climb you can by running at the beginning, then letting go of the run button just before Peach tires out. If you don't pitifully slide down to your death, that means you made it to an off-screen ledge. Take another short break for the screen to catch up, then continue your ascent. This last bounce pad actually works with a touchscreen, thank you god, so get up to the area inside the crushers and wait for your chance when they're fully retracted to climb them. After that, ultimately stressful assault on your brain requiring simultaneous use of four controllers, you'll finally discover that everything you just did was completely pointless and you are doomed! Take a couple seconds to reflect on the meaninglessness of existence as the death you've spent so long avoiding finally- <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding! You're safe! Real talk, that was simultaneously the worst and best level of the jumpless run. If you don't want to invest the time in doing an entire jumpless playthrough, at least try this level. From then on, though there are some levels that don't look possible, they always somehow manage to be levels on split paths that we can safely ignore. And there's not much else the game can throw at us in the way of challenge after what we just saw. We run all the way to the end of World Castle and all the way to the end of World Bowser with little extra effort. We're still gonna need to do one final sweep for green stars, but there's more than enough scattered throughout the game to get us to the 180 necessary to play the final level, Bowser Dash Castle. To give us just one more dose of pain, Bowser copyright infringes our godlike cat powers and challenges us to one final vertical auto-scroller. But unlike the fuzzy mine, Meowser's tower is outdoors and spacious, letting us climb up with relative ease. There's even a cat refilling station after the checkpoint, so as long as you have enough lives, you never have to worry about running out of cats. And the final final segment is a little less climactic than I think the devs intended. Meowser doesn't bother trying to actually hit you, he just keeps breathing fire in the same spots over and over. Regardless, the POW block is immune to the touchscreen, so we will have to put in a minimum amount of microscopic effort. Toad has the highest strength and Luigi has the highest hitbox, making for the ultimate combo to murder Meowser once and for all. At the final flagpole, we pull off one final show-off, finishing with every member of the party simultaneously to celebrate the ultimate display of solo teamwork. The Super Mario 3D World No Jump Run is mission complete! One final note before signing off. At first I was worried the rule set might have been too restrictive, but late into the run I started to think it was actually the opposite. While the run is pretty ludicrously mean already, the highest difficulty spikes are pretty much the same even if we cut out bounces in Peach's float. If you want to try out this run yourself, I recommend and going the extra mile. One word of warning though, this run is absolutely catastrophic. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Andrew Seibert, Mrs. Seckman, Eric Flynn, Leslam, RB Drock, Hyper Scrub Zio, Zolano, Mr. Harry Wonka, Alexander Button, Kay Gordon, Chris Nate, Mason 2K, Anu, Salieri, Ross Clark, Ikrira, JD, Jez, Robert B. Brachier, Game Champ 3000 Sucks, Citrus Lush, Zayna Bang, King Tom Nook, BCR Main Sound, JJ McKnight, Joshua Bradbury, Vincent Hall, Bass Singer 313, Game Champ 3000 Sucks Sucks, and Plasma Phoenix. Let me know how much this video sucks and how I can improve in the comments below. A real gato for watching and get out of my house.